Hi folks, welcome to Heart of the Home at Harris Acres. Today, I've saved the best for last. We're nearing the end of the year and I could not end this year without my best friend in the whole world and the best pastor in North Georgia, Matt Dibler. And today, Matt and I are gonna talk about a recipe for success. We're not gonna cook for you today. We're gonna to have a little snack at the end. We're gonna talk a little bit about my favorite recipe this year but Matt and I are just gonna talk about what it takes to be successful in today's world. And in today's world, it takes what to be successful? Well, it takes a lot of different things, but the world's philosophy of success is one thing, but the Bible says in Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. For in it, when you do these things, the Bible goes on to say, then will you find good success. Then That's you right. will make your way prosperous. That's success right. Success comes from the word of God and, and your life being focused on the Word of God. Absolutely, right. absolutely. And and we have seen great success with you this year. I have not forgotten. Wonderful song. Number one song of the year. You sing lead on that song and nobody, nobody could ever deliver that message the way you do. Well, it's an honor. I, I, I feel just like one of the instruments and it, uh, the writer of the song is such a precious man. Right. Lance Carpenter and uh, Ricky Atkinson helped him with it, but Lance Carpenter wrote the song and He's just a precious man, and then that gets delivered to us, and then we pray about it, and God let us sing it, and mm -hmm. then it's just an honor to be able to sing the song. It's all about the message in the song, not the person Absolutely. that's carrying that message. right? And, and that's something, you know, uh, Rita Pearson was on, and we talked about the fact that I don't want to be entertained when I go to a gospel singing, right. and I get annoyed by entertainers. I'm there to hear a message, and, and, and one of the songs y'all are doing, besides I Have Not Forgotten, My Lord's Been Walking, yeah. I'd never heard that, and it's a 60s song. Yeah. What an awesome message. Yeah. And I said, the message is what it's all about. And, and when you, you know, you know I'm a little bit partial, and I do think that you are, you are an awesome, you're an awesome preacher because you know the Bible, you believe the Bible, and you live the Bible. And that's what it's all about. Well, that's yeah, what it's all about. It's all about living out what you're singing about, living out what you're preaching exactly. about. That's exactly, exactly. Right. And uh, there's so many people out there that are looking at gospel music, and that's one of the things I believe that has hurt gospel music is that people have entered it into for entertainment purposes. Right, it's not. And we're not here to entertain, we're trying to be a blessing. That's, that's right, the key that's is. right. Um, you know, um, what is that song that Chris Smith does, um, Did You Tell Someone About Jesus? Yeah. That's another song that delivers yeah. a message every day. Every and, day. and you know, the recipe for success is be kind to people, be trustworthy, be honest, and be true to God. Right. Because you have to be. And if you want things to turn around in your life, look to the Lord. Because that's what it's all about. You know, I was in a deep, deep valley and, and so depressed. I'd lost my husband. I was mad at the whole world. Lost my husband and my mother. You stepped on stage and you sang Resurrection Ground. Right. Your brother wrote yeah. it. I sat there with 40 of my closest friends and I looked around and we were sobbing uncontrollably. All of us had had trauma that year. All of us had had sadness that year. But God lifted us from that and, and we never looked back. We never looked back. And I said a million times I have thought God put me there. I didn't want to be there. Right. I didn't know you from Adam's house cat and you have been such a blessing. Well, you've been a blessing to me because Two around that same time, my mother had passed right. away, and right. uh, we had seen some tragedy before with uh, little Marie passing away at three right. years old. In right. that year alone, we had four close relatives pass away in a matter of four months. And so, uh, but that song came out of it, and that's the key again: is the song, the message. What is God trying to do? When I go into a, a concert, or when I'm going into pastor and preach a message, I try to think. You know, I have no idea what those people are hiding behind those smiles. Mm -hmm. Everybody right. puts on some kind of a smile or everybody puts on some kind of a front to let people think that they're okay. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that in their heart, there's a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what those, uh, those pains are, but I know the one who does. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that directs in the song. And as we sing those songs, we trust in that, like in that situation, it becomes a blessing that not only lasts for two or three minutes of a song, but for a lifetime that Absolutely. in our situation brought on a lifetime relationship that uh, I believe that God has used to be a blessing to others too because right. we're able to fellowship and also kind of get each other out of 
uh, down times. I mean, right. because we're, we, we're all here, we need each other, and right. we all need the Lord. And, and that's what it's all about, sharing the message right. and sharing the good times, the bad times. You know, when my mom was diagnosed with cancer first, and I lost her, and literally I thought, oh my gosh, my husband's going to be okay because God won't do this to me twice. And I trusted God. Right. Through the whole thing, I trusted Him. And the night that my husband left here, I still trusted God because I knew he did what was right. Exactly. And from that, six weeks later, I met you. And from then on, it was like I looked up. And I didn't look back and I didn't look down. I looked up. And there were days, I mean, I would play Amazing Grace and cry uncontrollably. And it's still, I love the song and I love the message of that song. But I was really down, and I'm never down anymore. And it's right. such a great feeling. It is such a positive, uplifting. And, and when you think, oh, you know, I'm having a bad day, no, yeah. it's a good day. And it could be worse. It could be you know, worse. It could be worse. And the Bible talks about it. It rains on the just and the unjust. That simply means everybody has a hard time. That's right. Everybody has a That's rough right. time. And, and it's just so, uh, what I look at people in the world, and I'm not saying that I'm better than they are. I'm just saying there's people that walk this walk without the Lord. Exactly. And I look at them and I ask the question, well, how do you handle your hard times? Mm -hmm. What do you have and who do you have to turn to? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to go through a death of a loved one. You're going to go through cancer with somebody. You're going to go through a job problem. But I have somebody to walk with me. That's I have right. the Lord and He never leaves me nor That's forsakes right. me. And uh, he tells me in First Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Now, there have been times, some of the situations I've faced, I wonder, does he really care? Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that he does. And I have Absolutely. faith in the word of God to know that what he says is true. That's right. At my mother's funeral, uh, mother didn't want preaching, but she wanted the 23rd Psalm. Yeah. And one of my cousins who had had a terrible car wreck years ago, he was drinking and he wasn't living the way he should. He had a terrible car wreck. He can barely walk. He's on a cane. That boy is in church every Sunday now, and at my mother's funeral, he stood and recited the 23rd Psalm. His speech is a little slow. He had a little brain damage. The most awesome moment of my life because there was David who survived. By God's grace, he survived, and there lay my mother who had gone on to a better place, and, and she wanted to share that special moment with David. So, you know, in life, if we look to the right man for the answers, we also find the right people to connect right. with. Right. And one of the things we're going to talk about today are connecting with the right people, choosing the right people to do business with, sure. choosing the right people to follow in music, like the Diplomats or the Inspirations right. or the Carolina Crossman. Choose groups who are there to share a message with you. Right so guys, when we come back, Matt and I are going to continue talking and we're going to visit and we're going to do a recap of 2007. We're really looking forward to 2008. And we want you to come right back. We'll be here too. Hi folks, welcome back to Heart of the Home at Harris Acres. Today, my guest is Matt Dibler, the lead singer for The Inspirations. Matt and I are back now, and we're going to talk a little bit more about your music. Now, you have you ever written a song? I've written a few, you know, and The Inspirations recorded one of them back a few years ago entitled Jesus Knows What You're Going Through. Okay. And an interesting story behind that is in 1994 that I wrote the song, I had had some pretty major back problems, and they put me down from complete bed rest and I was in a parsonage at that time where I had pastored in Easley, South Carolina and um, every Sunday and Wednesday I'd watch everybody go to church and I couldn't go because I was in complete bed rest and, mm -hmm. and I thought it was so discouraging but the Lord came through with a song about Jesus knows what you're going through and that's where wow. that song came from. Wow. Well, well, who wrote Godly Family? Godly Family was written by a man named Ben um, I can't think of his last name, but anyway, um, it was actually a song sent into the Inspirations. Okay. And um, of course, it's more of a family song, so mm -hmm. it really didn't fit the Inspirations. But I, and any time I find a song like that, I kind of put it back and and think, well, I'll listen to it some other time in case I ever do a solo or I do mm -hmm. a family thing, and that's what we did. I love that song, and so we we took it to Danny Crawford. I don't know if you're familiar with him, no. a wonderful musician, and he did the music for us and. And our family recorded that. It's a great song. Well, I sponsor the Hometown Sing on WLJA on Sunday mornings. That is the most requested song. Yeah. The Wonderful most requested song. song. It is an awesome song. And I said, to know your family makes me love the song more because your family is a godly family. Yeah. You have wonderful daughters. You have a wonderful wife. You're so blessed. Yeah. And you couldn't do what you do without her. No, you couldn't uh, do what you do if your daughters weren't good girls. They're right. good girls. Right. They don't give you any trouble. Sabrina plays the piano. Lindsay sings. 
Um, awesome kids. You, you, you said, have done a job. You said they don't give me any trouble. <laughs> I missed something here. No, I don't. Uh, if they're but, watching this, I'm in, I'm in trouble now. But, uh, no, uh, they are great. They are they're, good It's kids. a great family, and I'm thankful for my wife and my children. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things in their life that they've got going on, too, and a lot of times there's volleyball games that dad can't be there, and mm -hmm. uh, there's things that go on, and uh, there's a lot of understanding on everybody's part That's to, right. to do this. And, and they have to understand that you and I have had this conversation many times. When you took the full-time pastor, we were like, oh, no, how can he do both? Mm -hmm. And my reply was, you can't give up the singing because you reach people through song that might not go to church. Right. There are a lot of husbands, long distance truckers, my husband was one of them who wasn't in to go to church, but we went to every gospel singing we could. Right. And um, it's very important to reach the people and, and your children understand that. You do something that touches so many. Right, well, they are, they're, there's times of course that get tough when you really wish you could be right there at home mm -hmm. with them and all that stuff, but they're, very supportive. I, I never one time have I ever left on a, a trip to leave out on a Thursday or something like that to leave and them saying, just don't go. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there, um, there's times they might would have wanted to, but they've right. never said it in a way that, you know, that they really meant for you not to go because right. they knew the ministry side. If it wasn't ministry, it wouldn't be worth going. That's right. That's but right. you're right. There's a lot of people that will listen to gospel music that will not go to church. And I think in our day and time, we've got a lot of people that are kind of living in a box saying, all right, we're here in this building. We have a steeple come to us. And the Bible mm -hmm. says go out to them. Right. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Well, compelling them could be witnessing with a gospel track or it could be compelling them with music. That's and right. that's what God's chosen that's us right. to do. So. Well, my mother was probably one of the most religious people in the world, but she wasn't in church every Sunday. Right. But she would walk out here under a tree and sit down and she and God would have a talk. Sure. And Mama usually got the best of it. <laughs> she was very... Um, just a wonderful woman who, who did what she always believed to be right. She would give you the shirt off her back. And, and I used to say, Mama, you know, you're, you're on this limited income. You can't do this. And she said, Honey, God will provide. And he always did. And I said, It's so funny because he does always provide. Always, he always really does. does. You never have been without, you know, mm -hmm. if you really think about it. And like I said, a lot of people inside church buildings that go every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, that's a wonderful thing, and I agree with that, and I promote that. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that a person that is without is not saved, mm -hmm. is not, right. does not know the Lord as their Savior, and it doesn't mean that one's more spiritual than the other. It that's means right. that somebody has, has uh, they're obeying the Scriptures by not forsaking the assembling of themselves together. But there are some people within those churches that never miss a service, and I, I mean, I shouldn't say this, but they're mean as the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Some sure of them are, you're right. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, mean, I hate right. to say it that way, that's but it's right. the truth. That's right, so, that's the truth. But, that, you know, you've got to be careful. Granny Harris would say the truth will stand when everything else that's fails. That's exactly right. Well, <laughs> the Bible's plain on we'll all give an account of ourselves. That's right, yeah. that's right. Now, one of the things about church, there's not a better church anywhere than Crossroads. I agree with the that. The best group of people. When I started going down there, I went for the music because I went one day to visit and Nicholas told me, he said, Mama, you have got to hear this choir. He said, there's nothing any better. Right. So I walked in, John Ferguson was singing that day. Right. And I left there and I thought, what an awesome group of people. And the more I got to know them, the more I learned to love them. And I said, now I can't wait to see them. Right. And, and a lot of Sundays we don't get to go. Nick's race and we get in at four or five o'clock in the morning. And a lot of Sundays I don't go, but I get the sermons because sure. Janelle sends them to me and I share them with my friends here. And then we also send them to the soldiers in Iraq. And I want people to pray for our soldiers sure. and pray for the people who can't get to church, who are dealing with cancer and chemo and things like that, but who can hear the message through a song. And if you can buy an inspiration CD or the diplomats or, or one of the groups that we know is there for the message, right. then we encourage yeah. you to do that. I, I agree with that 100%. And we do need to look toward our troops. A lot of times they're forgotten at a time, That's right. this time of the year especially. That's right. That's one of the things, um, you know, I don't know what season it is over there, but I know when it's hot here, it's it's 10 times as hot there, right. you know. So they are, we really do need to support them. And that's something I want, I want you to be sure and talk about when you do your prayer. But the thing that um, when you walk into a church like Crossroads and you see the people there, all walks of life, all income levels, um, 
the neatest group of people yeah. who truly love the Lord. Love people and love the Lord. That's they right. love the Lord. And I said, it, it just shines. It just oh, yeah. shines. It is hey, awesome. Lord's and they're very lucky there. to have you. I'm lucky to have them. Yes, you're right about that. You're right about that. Now, guys, we are going to come back, and in a minute, we're going to fix a, a quick snack that happens to come from one of my favorite restaurants. These people have been in business 50 years, mm. and they trust God to always provide, and they, good Christian family, and I'm so proud to know them. We're going to talk about them a little bit, and we're going to have some of their food, and then we're going to have you end with a prayer. And I think it's just going to be a good day for people to relax and enjoy the time that God has given us together. So hang on, guys. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Heart of the Home at Harris Acres. We are ending 2007. Been an awesome year. I want to thank some people who made our second year of Heart of the Home possible. Uh, Mayfield Milk, the Diplomats, um, the Inspirations, people that I have grown to love and grown to trust. And I trust them to always do what's right. Now, another young man who was our guest this year, Brett Miller of Carding Crusaders. Matt, do you know him? I don't know him. I, uh, I know Rodney, which works with him. Right. 22, 23-year-old young man who started Carding Crusaders at the cart tracks, and right. he he just makes sure that kids know and learn about Jesus. Yeah, he and has a it, tremendous burden from what I hear. He about. does. He does. And and he, he, lives, um, he lives to serve the Lord. He is a wonderful young man. He was my favorite guest this year because... I hit him up at the track. He didn't know me. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah, he didn't know anything about cooking. And one of my favorite recipes was wings. So I did a um, barbecue chicken and orange marmalade wing recipe for him. He came on, we did it, and we loved it. Now today, the recipe that you and I are gonna share as a snack, because we have talked about don't stress out over the holidays. Right. Go to your favorite restaurant in Orlando, Florida, I might add, and get Gabriel's wings or get a Gabriel sub. These are good Christian people who have been in business 50 years, and, and they say, God bless you when you leave, and they mean it, they mean it. Now, be sure, and as 2008 comes, do business with people who trust in the Lord right. and, and do the things that they know to be right. And one of the things that you and I have talked about is music, ministering to people. You're preaching ministers to people every single week. And a TV ministry would be an awesome thing for you, young man. Maybe that's in your future for 2008. You're praying about it. I right. think that would be so wonderful because you could reach so many more people who are shut in and can't get to that's church. Right. That's right. Or I wouldn't have to drive to Lawrenceville. <laughs> I love that drive yeah. to Lawrenceville. It's right past the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> uh, I made it over today. And I, it was an interesting drive. I couldn't believe you made it as many I do it on Sunday mornings, and I love right. it. It's, it's a beautiful drive. Now, Matt and I are going to have a little snack in a little bit, but right now, guys, we're going to stop, and Matt is going to end our 2007 with a prayer, and we're going to begin 2008 with a prayer, and we're going to pray that everybody has a wonderful year. Matt, I'm going to turn over to you now. All right, well, let's have a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we're so thankful, Lord, for the year that you've given us in the year 2007. Lord, we're so thankful for every provision that you made for us. Lord, we look back and we realize that we haven't had to go hungry, we haven't had to go cold, and we've had a place to sleep, and we thank you for our families. Thank you for meeting every need that we've ever had this last year. There's been some rough times, there's been some hard times, but you've been with us every step of the way, just as you promised you would. Now, Lord, we also realize that you're going to be with us in the next year. Father, it's so hard to believe that as the years pass by, that they're passing by so fast that there were, we are already at the year 2008. And I pray the Holy Spirit of God would work on our hearts to be a better Christian than we were last year. Help us to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. As Sherry mentioned, Father, how these folks that are using their talents and their abilities in these restaurants and these things that they're doing, Lord, they're using them to reach out to others. And I pray that we would do the same thing in our everyday life. Lord, help us to realize that we do need to relax at this time of the year, not to be so stressed. Help us to look to Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, I pray you'll bless this ministry, this uh, program, the heart of the home that you might touch as it goes into many homes. I pray that folks would realize it's not about the food, it's uh, all about our Father. And Lord, I pray that you'd help this program to be a blessing to many. Lord, bless our church. Thank for Crossroads Baptist Church and help us to glorify you in every ministry that we are involved in. And if there's one that's listening that does not know Christ, may they realize that he is the only way to heaven. We ask you these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Y'all, 2007 is ending. It's been a wonderful year. Wonderful. It's been a wonderful year. Friends, 
family and blessings and many blessings and the many blessings come to us because we look to the Almighty Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. Same time, same channel. Mm -hmm. We always have good gospel music. Usually we have some recipes. To, today, no cooking. Just a good, good day of fellowship and friends. Remember, 2007 is ending. Let's all look forward to 2008. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll be back. Bye-bye. This is not the end. It's resurrection ground. We gather together to say our goodbyes to our precious loved one. Oh, how our hearts ached inside. Then we went to the place where they lowered their body down. Some call it a grave. I call it resurrection ground. Resurrection ground. No more graves allowed. We'll meet them in the air. This is not the end, it's resurrection ground. Listen to the words of this verse. My brother wrote this song just two hours after burying his little three-year-old daughter. We come here often to see where our child lay. It doesn't seem so long ago she ran around and played. How sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave, it turns to resurrection ground. Resurrection ground, no more graves allowed, we'll meet them in the air. It's not the end, it's resurrection ground, resurrection ground, no more graves allowed, we meet them in the air, no more party there, with Jesus we'll be for all eternity, this is not the end. It's resurrection ground. This is not the end. It's resurrection ground. We come here often to see where our child lay. It doesn't seem so long ago. She ran around and played. How sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave it turns to resurrection.